forever you have done in my life My bagai, that is a gabela Upezo kati yangu na mungu wangu My Lord, I surrender my life to you For this ever you have done in my life My bagai, that is a gabela In the Bible, we have seen on several occasions where dancing has, uh, has, uh, has been associated with the praise or has combined with the praise to bring glory, the glory of God on earth for deliverance of his people. For example, you look at Jonathan in the Bible. Um, uh, um, you look at uh, Jehoshaphat in the Bible. When he moved the Israelites in the battle with the praise and worship and dancing, victory just came down. It flopped down like rain. The Bible speaks on several occasions about dancing. You look at the Bible in the book of Psalms, uh, uh, Psalms the, the 150 chapter, it's talking about dancing. It's talking about praise God with a dance. Praise God with the elements or the instrument of praise, guitars, zeze, all types of instruments that are used. When you play a guitar or when you play an instrument, automatically you will be touched to move your body. And when you move your body, that's already a dance. So God appreciates the dance. There's no way you can do worship God without a dance. So dancing is one of the most important elements that, that has really uh, moved the heart of God when it comes to worship and dance. You look at when David was coming with the Ark of the Covenant from the Philistine land, coming, celebrating, bringing it into, the, uh, into his capital city or in, in, into his palace. The Bible clearly states that David really danced. He danced until even the robes that he was wearing were able to fall down. It was dance that made it to happen like that. So you see, when we dance, it means we have to be vigorous. And there is no time that we can praise God minus dance and feel to the maximum, feel to the maximum of our heart that we have really praised the Lord. God says that praise him with a dance. Now I want to say that there are some things that some churches observe and when they observe some things they have laid down some doctrinal foundations which bar dancing from maybe uh, their, their, their normal worship or their more normal praises. We have faced a lot of a lot of opposition when it comes to dancing. When we introduce people to dancing we have faced a lot of opposition from mostly some of the re already established religious organization or churches which have their established doctrines. To them, dancing is seen. Just because sometimes, maybe when some people were still serving the devil in the world, they used to dance music, maybe their traditional music, using traditional instruments, to fulfill their own desires. So when they get saved, they think that if you transfer music in the church, if you transfer dancing a guitar, playing a guitar, playing a deu deu, playing maybe a, 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 a trumpet, which you call a horn, uh, blowing it in the church, to them they see you are doing some of the things that are not allowed in the church. They think it is sinful. It is not. The Bible says we have to praise God with all instruments that can access, that can allow to produce sound that will praise the Lord. Another thing that bars some, uh, uh, our contribution to praise and worship uh, is that some people, when they look at praise, the way we dance, and the way we access, I mean we lift, we, we, the way we, we present ourselves to God, they may think that we are doing it to please somebody else. You know, to us, 
And what I've taught the children is that the Bible says in the book of Psalms 147, clap the hands all you nations, worship the Lord, make a joyful noise unto the Lord. You come in our church, we praise God. When it means clapping, we clap our hands. When it means jumping up and shouting and making all manner of noise, we make it because we know we are doing the Bible. And when we are doing the Bible, we are not worried. We know that we are following the Bible. It's a high time that the church became dogmatic to follow what the Bible says. If the Bible says dance, you dance. If the Bible says clap your hands, you clap. If the Bible says you make a wonderful, a joyful noise unto the Lord, you make it. That is worship that will touch the heart of God. I want to say, in praise, we don't appear to be gentlemen and ladies. Some of the things that are as from uh, actually uh, accessing the throne of God through praise and worship is that we have become so gentle, we have become, uh, uh, we have become honorable, we don't want to praise God uh, maybe through uh, uh, dance, through uh, jumping up or making a wonderful noise to pigs as ingine bi gelegene mbele ya mungu kiambia mtu mweshimiwa naona kama unawo you are undermining him you are undermining his status maybe his intellectualism I want to say when it comes to praise we put all other things aside our knowledge our education our material wealth whatever we have acquired and what we have not acquired we put it aside and then we present before God, we present ourselves before God as his children who needs to worship him. So when it comes to dancing, we dance like we never went to school. When it comes to shouting, we shout like we are drunk. When it comes to clapping, we clap like more than the, the, the African divine uh, 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 members who can beat their drum and clap louder than if you may think that maybe these people have taken bank. We have not. So that's what we normally do. And the, when we do this, it will draw the presence of God down to earth. And that's what, that is our target. That's our aim. We want God to come down because of our worship. And that's why we are saying we are no longer going to be conservative. We are not going to relent. We are going to give ourselves fully to God to teach this young generation that God is giving us, to teach them to, to be exhausted, to exhaust their body and their strength through praise and worship. See ya. 